Almost six years after the kidnap of the Chibo girls by Boko Haram terrorists, a military mercenary has revealed that some alarming details about how politics and power delayed the release of the kidnapped girls and the declaration of assets back and forth between the presidency and the economic rights and our accountability project, Serap, continues. As a presidential spokesperson has stated this, that there is no law mandating President Mahmoud Buhari to declare his assets publicly. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. Revelations by mercenary and chairman of a private army, Specialized Tax, Training, Equipment and Protection International, Iben Balo, has alleged that there was a delay in the rescue of the Chibo girls due to some power play in government and that the United States is heavily involved in this. If this is true, I wonder, is international relations and holding political power of more importance than the safety of the citizens? Joining us to discuss this this evening on Plus Politics is political analyst Shagun Chopiton and also Martins Lomber. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show tonight. Thanks for having me. Now, let's get talking. And quickly, I want to ask, what do you make of the claim, the, the allegation of Iben Balo? Let, let's start with you, Chopiton. Um, well, I mean, uh, it's, he sounds like somebody that was involved um, in all of the processes, given the things that he said. Um, so one would receive um, his claims um, with, with a certain sense that he might have something, he might know something. Um, what I find a bit strange is um, that this account almost, I'm not sure whether this is not a complete contradiction of some of the things that a former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom said okay. about the same issue. Um, you know, around that same time. Or, so is it a case of him contradicting David Cameron? Or is this a case of this being additional details as to what exactly happened? Yes. Because according to David Cameron, um, there seemed to have been some lethargy on the part of the government in power as at the time that happened that prevented the rescue of the Chibo girls happening yes. with the help of UK, uh, the British, and the United and the States forces. Um, but this is another person who appears to have been involved at some high levels, saying that, well, after the change of button between President Jonathan then and President Buhari now, that there seems to have been some power play that um, compelled the administration of President Buhari to cancel his contract, um, which then therefore jeopardized the, their plans towards rescuing the girls. Yes. So, but, but, I, but I also, um, um, I, I like to look between the lines and listen for the unspoken. And it does sound to a certain degree as though this guy lost out um, in the uh, business side of things and perhaps is just trying to, I don't know. I, I really don't know what his motivations are, but there's a lot, there's a lot of conjecture here and we can um, only wonder what the truth Martins, is. Martins, what are your contemplations on this? I... I want to toe the line that the position he has taken is not very far from the position that the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, took. I recall that um, in his book, Jonathan claimed that the U.S. interfered with uh, the rescue mission, interfered with our politics, and also said that um, it was one of the reasons why eventually when he looked back at the whole uh, electioneering process, he decided to just throw in the towel, that he felt that the conspiracy was too strong. Now, listening to Balo, I picked a few things which, if you now uh, place them side by side with the events that took place then, it will appear that indeed the man is not very off the mark. The reason I say so is that, um, I mean, for instance, regarding the Chibok um, episode, we are aware that the West African Examinations Council wrote to the state government, Borno state government, concerning that school in particular, aside of all the other surrounding issues. And also we are aware that the Ministry of Education, as at that time, also wrote to the Borno state government, saying that it will be better if these uh, children were evacuated from the school possibly maybe 
take them to the state capital where they will be safer and all of that. Now, the state governor as at that time, uh, Shetima, guaranteed the safety of those girls. That is on the one hand. Then there are other things that also played out then. For instance, the school authorities who also had children in that school, their children were not around on that day. The electricity was unavailable on that day. The generator was not on and so on and so forth. So when you look at all of that surrounding development and then you, you know, put that side by side with what this man has just said, it will appear that to a large extent is not off the mark. That is the position I would like to take. All right, we'll come back to more questions. Um, we have a video, a video clip from um, Iben Balo. Let's take a look at this and then we'll come back. I need to first of all make it very clear that we were a subcontractor. There was a prime contractor appointed that appointed us as a subcontractor. Um, our initial aim was not Boko Haram per se, but it was to rescue the Shibok girls. Um, they were the girls that had been kidnapped and where the Western response was hashtag save the girls. Um, that type of nonsense does not save girls. Unfortunately, these girls became victims of a situation where the security had broken down in a specific area. They were kidnapped and that was the first mission, rescue the Shibok girls. Um, we then did a selection process of the Nigerian soldiers. Um, the soldiers were retained after the um, selection process, were then trained um, in, in a very specific way to conduct a hostage rescue operation. And that requires a very specific type of person. However, Approximately five or six weeks into the training of the hostage rescue team, we were asked to change our mission. We're not allowed to finish because it came at a time when governments were in the process of changing. I think President Jonathan's government um, possibly saw the entire um, Boko Haram contract, if we call it that, uh, almost as a, as a last gasp in order to regain popularity. The incoming president, President Buhari, was heavily supported by a foreign government and one of the first missions was to terminate our contract. Could you name that foreign government? Yes, we were told it was the United States um, and they had actually funded President Bahari's campaign. Um, the campaign manager for President Bahari came from the US um, and I'm not saying that the United States is bad, I understand foreign interests, um, but I would have thought that a, a, a threat such as Boko Haram on the integrity of the state of Nigeria ought to be actually a priority. It wasn't. Now that was Iben Balo. I mean, pretty sure and very assertive of, of his claim and allegation. Now, he also did mention that President Obama was made to, to end the contract because the U.S. influenced his political campaign for 2015, which called for him to terminate whatever contract they had in rescuing the Chibo girls. What does this say? I mean, what this says to me is, first of all, I'm embarrassed I'm embarrassed as a Nigerian, um, and I think that um, it's a pity that we claim to be, um, at least if not global, definitely a power and a force on the African continent. And to think that we, we had, if what he's saying is true, and you know, he can't come out and just make spurious claims on international TV, yes. so there must be some element of truth to what he's saying. Right, so um, that we needed foreign mercenaries to help us execute. If you listen to what he said, he wasn't talking about the rescue of the girls alone. He was talking about executing a war against Boko Haram. Boko Haram yes. Right, so that our military forces, <laughs> the, the biggest country, the biggest economy in, on the continent, needed mercenaries to fight insurgents who at that time, I, I don't know, I mean, they're not necessarily as internationally connected then as they are now, um, is, is, is a bit embarrassing. And the other thing that this says to me, which is something that I think we've all known, um, but is you know, just further buttressing that point, is the business of terrorism, this um, insurgency, is a business. And it's a multi-million dollar business. And there are interests that are um, benefiting and feeding fat off the death of thousands of Nigerians. I mean, so even as we speak now, the insurgency is alive and well, perhaps a bit um, um, limited in scope to Meduguri, sorry, Borno, Borno State, on the outside of Meduguri. You know, once you leave Meduguri within Borno State and some parts of Yobe State, it's not safe. 
because the insurgents are still very, very active. Yes. Right? So all of this is happening. People are still being killed as we speak now. And it's all because war is a business. War is an economic game. And we must not lose sight of that. And I think that we need to speak out and call governments and the people that should do the right thing to order so we'll end this carnage. It can be ended mm -hmm. if we choose to end it. I, I think that the unfortunate thing is that there are too many interests involved in ensuring that this thing actually doesn't quite end completely. Yes. Okay, um, I understand, Martin, I understand international interests when it comes to issues like this, <laughs> but now he alleged that there was a U.S. involvement during the 2015 um, political campaign for President Mahmoud Buhari, which pressured the president to terminate the contract to the rescue of those girls. What does it say in, in a whole? My, my position has not changed over the years regarding the whole Boko Haram insurgency thing. I am convinced beyond all kinds of uh, conjectures that the Boko Haram episode, even as of today, is a grand conspiracy that needs to be investigated. Listening to Balu, clearly what he has said, outside of the international dimension to, you know, uh, the interventions of the United States, States. clearly listening to him, it, he was saying more or less that there was something that was untidy about the Boko Haram episode in Nigeria. And I think that looking at the trend, what do I mean? He said something about the embarrassment that we needed to bring in external forces to help us. Muhammadu Buhari said something similar before he became president, which was that why will Nigeria go and be talking with Niger, with uh, Chad, with... But what was his first outing out of Nigeria? He went to those same countries. In essence, the truth is that when you're talking about insurgency and wanting to bring it down, chances are within your own country, you are not sure who is a conspirator. We have religious divide. We have, you know, tribal issues. Looking at this government today, even if you want to pretend about the direction that they are going, you cannot help but notice that yes, a certain religion is being favored. Yes, a certain culture is being favored. Yes. So in essence, I'm saying it here publicly. If the Nigerian state is serious, Balo has come out. Good enough, it wasn't a Nigerian medium that interviewed him. Yes. It was an international uh, media organization. Let the National Assembly, House of Representatives, the Senate, let them begin a probe. I am also willing to come and share the little ideas I have. I am convinced that the Boko Haram insurgency, whatever, is a huge conspiracy that needs to be unmasked. Now, the, the, the insurgency, Boko Haram, it's, it's, it's post-Jonathan. And I would, I would have thought for someone like Mahmoud Baru who came, one of his chain mantra was that he was going to rescue the Chibo girls. I mean, that was pretty evident to all Nigerians. Now, why would you... With the U.S. involvement, I'm still trying to understand the scope of the involvement he had in his campaign for 2015, terminate a contract that was going to rescue the remaining Chibo girls. Because in total, we had about 276 girls who were abducted from the Government Girls Secondary School, Chibo in Borno State, in April 2014. Now, 57 escaped, as the report had it, and 107 were released through negotiations. But we still have about 112 still in captivity here. Um, of Boko Haram. Now, would you, would you say the GJ administration was more at the forefront of the fight against this than the current administration of President Mahmoud Buhari Shegun? Um, I think the facts are there, they're evident mm -hmm. to be seen. Um, um, regardless of the politics of the, this issue, because as much as it's um, a security, national security issue, there's a very, very strong political connection to this. And um, both this administration and the previous administration has continued to insist to play politics with the issue. Um, so by you think the old the, issue was the, politicized? The, no, there is definitely some political element to all of this. And in fact, if you, like he was saying, there are some, you know, if you sit down and just do a bit of an analysis of the events um, that led, especially I'm speaking particularly about the Chibok girls now. Yes. Um, to the kidnap and all of that, like he highlighted, there's just too many things that don't add up. They don't make sense. 
right? So there's definitely more that there's more we don't know than what we know yeah. about that incident. But um, talking about the insurgency itself and the role that has been played since it started until now, um, I think, you know, it started around 2010, 2011 with the killing of their leader, Mohammed, yes. um, what's his name, right? Yusuf. Uh, Yusuf, Mohammed Yusuf. And then it gradually escalated until it blew up in our faces in 2013. Until as of 2013 and parts of 2014, these guys were holding territory in Nigeria. There were places where they had hoisted flags and they were running a government and collecting taxes on, in, our, in our sovereign soil. And they had advanced so much in their, in, their, in, in their carnage that they had reached Abuja. They were blowing up places. The United Nations building, for goodness sake, in Abuja was blown up. Um, Kano, you know, um, um, Channels Television lost a correspondent in Kano to, to these insurgents. And, you know, all over, all over the north, northeast, northwest, these guys were on rampage. And in fact, I remember that at that time, 2014, there was actually palpable fear here in Lagos. There were times when we were saying, ah, is this safe to cross Third Mainland now? Because you never, you don't know whether what, Boko Haram might, happen, might just yes. blow it up. You know, so that's where we were then. Now, prior to just before the elections, the president then, President Jonathan then, sort of ramped up the, you know, the effort, the military effort, mm -hmm. and there was a pushback, you know, which was then continued with this new president, like he said, <laughs> um, President Wari then came on board and said that, you know, this, because these guys would attack Nigerian um, um, targets and run back into Chad, Cameroon, and Niger, yes. then they felt there was a need to do a multinational task force and all that. And it's only recently, just last week, that Niger was now saying, um, you know, their troops had finished their mission and they'd been withdrawn, you know. So, so I think that we've had a progression where it's gotten worse and then it's gotten better. But um, what I don't subscribe to is to now say, oh yeah, the war has been won, we've defeated them, when we know that till today, till yesterday, these guys are still bombing places and killing people, including Nigerian troops. Now, let's, let's take it from a different dimension, Martins. The involvement of the US in the 2015 presidential campaign of President Mubarak, what, what does that mean? It's a straightforward allegation. He didn't mince words. He said that the United States government, under Barack Obama, sponsored, that's the word, sponsored Muhammad Buhari. Don't forget that the Secretary of State then, John Kerry, came to Nigeria at some point to the 19 uh, Northern Governors. Yeah went to the United States, held meetings. Sorry, because I do ask this, Chef, I'm also going to take your opinion. Sorry to cut you short. Yes. I do ask it because um, Trump stands a possible impeachment because also there, there was a, a claim, an allegation of yes. Russia involvement yes. Yes. in his election. Beautiful. So what does that say? You see, the hypocrisy in Nigeria is very loud, but the response to the hypocrisy is graveyard silence. And that is what bothers me. Because in all honesty, looking at the story, let me give you another scenario. Now, the Muhammad Buhari administration comes into office 2015, and what happens to the Bring Back Our Girls movement? They arrange meetings, and for some reason, they were fenced. And not just that, one of the co chairs of that movement uh, was her name, I mean, uh, you know, the, the uh, chairman, or is it managing director now of the Nigerian Ports Authority? For goodness sake, they have boxed most Nigerians who have been confined to just hearing what they tell us. Now, uh, i also give you another scenario. Yes, they hoisted flags according to the claims. I know why I'm saying so. If I put a flag on my car or if I put a flag on my house, I can always claim that this territory has been taken, for instance, and a video is there. Today, we talk about audio money. There's also audio videos, so to say. Don't forget that the last administration, which is where maybe the Balo uh, uh, enterprise comes in, they tried their best. They said, okay, we're going to you know, shift the elections so that we can take care of this insurgency thing. And of course, they held elections in every local government across Nigeria. What we are seeing today, I'm saying it publicly, is that it is what the government tells us that we have to live with. But there is no evidence. Because I've witnessed where senators come on the floor and say they cannot go to their villages 
have interests where members of the House of Representatives come to say, look, oh, I cannot visit my village. In this present dispensation, what am I saying? We're listening to lies. And we must challenge this government that we need evidence. The corridor of that information is lined with people who are from one section of the country. It's a big issue. And I am saying the Trump administration, if they want to face this issue, because elections are coming this year, Trump is Republican. The, the people that were alleged to have sponsored Buhari's uh, elections were Democrats. Let them table this matter. Let them call Balo. Shego, He's not well, in hiding. Yeah. What are the implications, the allegations of the US sponsoring the 2015 political ambitions of the incumbent? Unfortunately, we have absolutely zero evidence. I mean, and, and it's just pure conjecture. Yes. Um, it's one guy. You know, I mean, come on, he's a random a guy. Let, let's be yes. honest, he's yes. a random guy. You know, who's just come up and said, oh, the American press, uh, the American government sponsored Buhari. Now, don't forget that in politics and in international polit um, you know, uh, yeah, in international politics, politics, there are always interests, national interests. There is no, none of the superpowers that would see an election approaching in a major country in any region of the world that would not express interest of some sort or the other. And they would definitely want to have a say in who emerges. Yeah, but, but I'm believe. curious to know yeah. what could have been the interest of the United <laughs> States in Buhari's administration coming into power and then aborting the mission to rescuing the remaining 112 well, girls. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I would rather not comment on conjecture yes. because for, for me, we, we just don't know if these things are true. I'm just speaking from on the general principle that, look, foreign governments take interest. Now, separate from what happened allegedly with the Trump administration where a foreign government was accused of interfering mm and influencing that, you know, it's a different thing to say, yeah. oh, I back this person, you know, we support you indirectly. They have lobbyists and all that, perhaps even find funding across to him in, you know, through the back door. But to now say that somebody, a foreign uh, government sponsored, deliberately undermined the outcome of the election. It's almost like you're saying that you were colonized. So the Trump thing and the Buari purported Buari interest from the U.S. government is slightly different. Okay. And, you know, but, but like I said, I mean, it's, it's conjecture. Now, Martins, we still have <laughs> 112 girls unaccounted for. Now, would you, would you say the change in government, I mean, sabotage the, the possibility of the rescue of the remaining I, 112 I will not, girls? I will, not, I will not say so. Okay. And I think that my own thoughts are very clear. Uh, the people who are responsible for all of the, what we have witnessed, they are still with us. And if we do our internal house cleansing, I'm sure we will, uh, because, you know, in mathematics they tell you, you don't have to know uh, one factor from another. But by deduction, you'll be able to arrive at, you know, a solution. They say x plus y equals to 10, for instance, you're able to solve. In jurisprudence also, they, that's why they talk about going the legal route to determine certain outcomes. Yes. This Boko Haram thing, this insurgency thing, and then the political dimension to it, I think that they are one and the same thing. That is my clear understanding. Now, as to the 112 girls, because a change in administration, I don't think so. The Buhari administration is supposed to have been more eager because it was one of the pillars of their campaign. Yes. But we have seen some kind of like a dicical withdrawal even when you talk about Leah Shaibu, am I correct? Yes, Leah Shaibu. It's the same thing. So I am saying that the government appears very, very uninterested in rescuing those girls. There is no evidence to show. And sorry, just to say what, uh, to add, yes, what he had said about maybe no evidence. It, it is true. One guy has said what he said. But I also say that the former president did allege so to that extent, we are saying that there's some kind of... international of, interference. Jonathan yes, was so clear about said that. so, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And a few other people have also spoken about the same Yeah, matter. but I don't think this calls for, for a probe, for probe, an investigation. Of course. Um, of course. I, I think it will be a waste of our time and a waste why, why of would our resources. That? Because when that probe happens, you are going to be paying senators, you know, their usual 13 million naira per month. Look, we have bigger issues. These issues are... There, there is no... It's, it, before you deploy... Um, MIGA 
national resources. Look, our, 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 we're, we're a nation that is bleeding, right? Before you deploy mega national resources to go after a red herring, you've got to be sure that there is some substance behind this. I, like I said before, this is all conjecture. So I, I wouldn't support a probe. I think okay. that our Senate should face a more serious, okay. All right. more Thank serious you very much, serious um, issue. Shagun <laughs> Shopinto and also Martins Lomba for your contributions in this segment. Okay. Thanks for staying with us. We will go for a short break now. And when we return, what the presidency has to say about Serap's request for an asset declaration is next. Stay with us.